In this video, I am going to teach you everything that you need in order to start out as a streamer on Twitch. So this series will be a three-part series. I am going to discuss how to start streaming on Twitch and then I will be discussing how to upgrade your stream. So if you've been streaming for let's say one year, two years and you want to know how or where to invest your money in order to get the most value and the most growth out of your stream, I will make a video on that. The third video that I'm going to make in this series is how to build your Twitch community. So of course, um, even if you upgrade everything in your stream, you spend, invest a thousand dollars on um, your setup, you spend thousands of dollars on your PC, but then you don't really know how to build a Twitch community, trust me, it's going to be a long journey for you. When I started out Twitch streaming, I didn't know anything and I had to learn via research, via experience, and via just observing and analyzing um, Twitch metrics, watching other streamers and see how they grew their channel. So today I'm going to teach you so that you can avoid all of those mistakes. I didn't have a community to begin with. I started from scratch. I started with no equipment, with the lowest quality equipment you could ever imagine. And now we're here. <laughs> So I don't want to hear any excuses because if this has been your lifelong dream to start streaming on Twitch, this is the year to do it. 2020, let's go! Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Chris. Today I'm going to teach you how to start streaming on Twitch. So now that uh, we're all locked down and well, we can't really go out, if you've been thinking about starting streaming on Twitch, this is definitely the best time to do it. Just do it! Make your dreams come true! What are the first things you have to know or you have to install in order to start streaming on Twitch? Well, number one, I highly recommend OBS Studio. Download the latest version of OBS on obsproject.com slash download. On this website, you can see that you can download OBS Studio for Windows, Apple, and Linux. There are different means as to which you can install the software. However, I just recommend clicking on Download Installer. Follow the installation instructions and install OBS into your computer. Once installation is done, launch OBS Studio and you will be met by the installation wizard. Make sure to choose that you're optimizing OBS for streaming while recording is only secondary. Choose the native resolution of your monitor as your base canvas resolution. Leave FPS as it is for now. You can still change these settings later on. Make sure to choose Twitch as your service and then use a stream key. Here, I'm going to teach you where to find your stream key. Go to your Twitch account and select Creator Dashboard. On the creator dashboard, select preferences and then channel. Right away, you're going to see your primary stream key. You can easily copy your stream key by pressing the copy button. Now paste your stream key in OBS. Leave server on auto for now, as well as the video bitrate. Make sure to uncheck estimate bitrate as we're going to edit these settings later on. Here, I'm going to teach you how to add scenes to OBS. Scenes can have multiple sources, so for now, I'm going to teach you how to add your webcam. Select Video Capture Device. You can edit the properties of your webcam on this screen. For the purpose of this tutorial, just pretend that I chose my actual webcam. You can also resize your webcam accordingly. 
Here, I'm going to teach you how to add your microphone. Just click on the gear icon right beside mic. Let's also make sure that audio is working correctly, as this is what your stream is going to hear when you're streaming. You'll know that your audio and microphone are working correctly if the bar lights up when you play music or when you speak into your microphone. You can even adjust the volume threshold using the slider. And here are the settings for OBS. These are the settings that you were editing earlier with the auto configuration wizard. Check my description for the link to the best encoding and bitrate settings as recommended by Twitch. Keep your base canvas resolution at the native resolution of your monitor. However, output resolution refers to the resolution at which you will be streaming on Twitch. The maximum resolution as to which you can stream on Twitch is largely determined by your bitrate and encoding settings. It also depends on how powerful your computer is and the upload speed of your internet. So once you've downloaded OBS and you've followed all of my instructions on how to install OBS on your PC and get the best settings for your setup and your internet, the next thing to do is to focus on overlays. Overlays are basically those fancy stuff that you see on someone's channel whenever somebody subs to them, something comes out. <laughs> or whenever somebody donates, there's some pizzazz. So that's very entertaining. So I actually um, really encourage you to get overlays, especially when you're starting out, because it increases the entertainment value of your stream. So. What do I use for my overlays? I use OBS Live by Stream Elements. So if you don't know Stream Elements, Stream Elements is a website that caters to streamers and content creators, and they help you with a great many things actually, not just overlays, they also have bots for commands in your Twitch chat. And I will teach you how to customize your own overlay without having to pay a graphic artist. Just use your own imagination in order to create your branding on your stream using your overlays. Sign up for a free account on streamelements.com. Log in and you're going to see obs.live under the dashboard and activity feed. Download OBS Live and follow the installation instructions. Once the installation is done, launch OBS Live. You'll see that the interface of OBS has changed. Connect OBS Live with Twitch. Once logged in, you'll start seeing your activity feed as well as your chat. Without OBS Live, you're going to have to open your chat on a separate window as well as your activity feed. But who wants that, right? Let's all keep it in one place. With OBS Live, you can even move these windows around. You can also resize these windows as well as add or remove other toolbars. Here, I'm going to teach you how to use one of their overlays. Stream Elements calls their overlays as themes. You can see them on the themes gallery. Stream Elements has super themes, which are animated, static themes, which are not animated, as well as alerts and widgets. Make sure to explore all of these so that you can see which ones you want to add to your overlays. In order to use an overlay, just click on the Create button. Name your overlay, and then select Create My Overlay. From this point onward, you can just copy the link and paste it into OBS as a browser source. Make sure to change the width and height according to the resolution of your monitor.
Resize your webcam as well as your other sources according to how you want them to appear on your overlay. You can also change the sorting of these sources so that one source can appear on top of the other. You can even add different scenes for different overlays, such as a start and end screen. When starting a stream, Make sure to select the right scene and then click the Start Streaming button. By clicking on other scenes while you are live, that will transition your stream into a different scene. Here, I'm going to teach you how to customize and personalize your overlays. On the left-hand side, you're going to see the Layers toolbar, which is basically a navigation tool so that you can see all of the widgets on your overlay. This is sorted according to which widget is at the frontmost as well as the widget that is at the backmost of your overlay. Make sure to test that your alerts are working by clicking on the emulate button. Emulate basically just shows you how your overlay will respond when these events happen in real time while you are streaming. You can edit each widget on your overlay by clicking on that widget and then going to the settings toolbar on the left hand side. You can also move and delete widgets as you please. You can add more widgets by clicking on the plus button. Make sure to save your overlay. All changes are automatically reflected on the browser source on OBS. So, you've downloaded OBS Studio, you've downloaded your overlays, you have a stream elements profile, the next thing to know are commands. A command is basically um, something you type in Twitch chat that prompts the bot to respond. Meanwhile, a timer is something that the bot automatically does after X minutes or X chat lines that the bot automatically posts something in your Twitch chat. Stream Elements also has their own bot. On your SE account, under bot, click on chat commands. Enable any command that you want using the slider button. SE provides a lot of default commands. You can edit any command that you want by clicking on the drop down button. Check the description below for a link to my article on recommended bot commands and timers when you first start out streaming on Twitch. Most bots like Stream Elements also have custom commands, which are basically any command that you want to add. If you want to find out all the available syntax for the bot that you are using, you can simply search via Google. Here I am showing you the Nightbot command interface. Each bot offers custom or default commands. Here I'm going to show you how to add custom commands as well as disable or enable default commands on Nightbot. However, not all of them offer the same default commands. This is why I actually use three bots for my Twitch chat. But when you're starting out, it's better to just use one bot for now. If you want to try out a more advanced bot, you can download Streamlabs Chatbot. 
Bots can also help moderate your stream. Here on Stream Elements, you can see that the bot also offers spam filters. This prevents any Twitch user from spamming in your Twitch chat. On each bot, you will also see that they offer timers. You can add a timer and then set the conditions. Make sure to test the bot commands in your Twitch chat to make sure that they're working. And that's it! That's actually everything you need in order to start, keyword start, streaming on Twitch. Once you grow and you become more experienced as a streamer, you can download more softwares, you can buy more equipment, you can make your stream more lively and add more entertainment value. And if you are interested in upgrading your stream, please check out my Twitch video or my article on my website about how to upgrade your stream and how to invest your money in areas in your stream that will give it the most value for growth. Thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure to give me a like and subscribe to my channel in order to get notifications on when I'm going to upload my next videos on how to upgrade your Twitch stream and how to build a Twitch community. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comments below. Thank you so much, guys. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!